Randy, you're gonna you're gonna time. Yep. Okay. First of all, oh, sorry. First of all, it's a great honor to meet you. you um, you're a, a legend, and I just want to say thank you very much for everything you've done in the world of movies and for the people, most importantly, because right. you give us something that we want to see. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. And no worries. But um, you're from U of A, man. What? Why? Why U of A? Well, I was, it, it, unfortunately, it was a long time ago when I went to college, okay. and I started at ASU. I went there for a year, and at the time, it was a, a, a city college, and there were very few out-of-state students, and so on the weekends, it was like a ghost town, Tempe. And so Tucson was more of an out-of-state school and had more of uh, activities uh, during, during the, the weekends, and it wasn't, uh, it was more populated, so that's why I transferred. See, I can't even imagine yeah. U of A having nightlife, but anyway, um, you know, you, your degree is in psychology, right? but you know, my uncle always tells me the most important thing when you're in college is to just get the degree. You know, do you really use that degree now, or is it kind of the same, just go to college to get the degree? Well, it's, you know, anything you learn is easy to carry, and uh, you know, going to college is, it was an important thing for me. I'm a first generation American. My parents, uh, you know, pounded in my head, you got to have a college education, and I think it gives you an enormous amount of confidence. Uh, when you're sitting in a room and there's a bunch of college-educated individuals in there and you basically have a high school education, even though you might be smarter than any of the people in the room, there's a little, you, you, there's sort of an inferiority complex that, that you develop. I think it's really important to stand on that four-year education uh, as a building block for your career. Wow. Um, since you live in Kentucky, does... I, I, no, I live in I L.A. Mean, oh, you I have live a in farm the, in Kentucky. You have a farm in Kentucky. Right. Okay. Your job, right. Um, right. Well, still though, does this story hit a nerve to you? Well, yeah, because it's it's you know changed basketball. I mean, you know, basketball you, prior to 1966 was a was a white man sport, and uh, African American kids never had the opportunity to go to college in the South and play basketball or the Atlantic Coast Contra Conference. And a lot, and even the North, they were limited at the at the amount of exposure they got to play basketball. And this particular team and this particular coach changed it all. And um, it's an emotional story. It's a true story. I like to tell stories that, uh, about individuals that changed society for the better. This is one of those individuals. We did Dangerous Minds about a teacher that changed things, and Michelle Pfeiffer was in that. Uh, we did Remember the Titans about uh, two coaches that changed uh, history in that community for better. And this changed things on a national level. Both of those movies, especially Remember the Titans and Glory Road, dealt with sports mm -hmm. and racism. Um, why, um, why are these so important themes that you want to touch on in your movies? Uh, again, I think, you know, any way we can integrate society and take away the prejudice, I think it's better for all of us. You know, uh, African Americans have, you know, led the charge and fought our wars and never got the recognition that they deserved. Uh, they're phenomenal athletes. Uh, they're great entertainers. You just want to make sure um, that they remember their history and we remember their history and the things that didn't quite go the way we thought it would have gone. Uh, this is only, you know, 40 years ago. Uh, this was 10 years after Rosa Parks and 20 years after Jackie Robinson, and still the, the, the South wasn't integrated. Uh, so I think this this is a seminal sporting event uh, that changed a lot of things that very few people know about. I think anybody under 50 has no clue that this event ever took place. Speaking of history, music, I love the music in your movies, especially mm -hmm. Days of Thunder. Give me right. some loving in that. Just, right. But anyway, um, how do you, do you pick the music? I mean, does, can you see a scene and say, oh, this song, this, you know, we need to tell history through the music as well, through this song? I mean, we do that, you know, we do that. We have really talented editors and music editors and, and people in our company that work very closely in, uh, in concert with the director and myself to give you the best soundtracks possible. This is filled with, uh, you know, great 60s music, and we have an Alicia Keys song that uh, you only heard a demo uh, of. Uh, in fact, hopefully we'll have two Alicia Keys songs at the end of the movie. A uh, great artist who fell in love with this movie for obvious reasons and has been working very closely with our people to give us some really inter entertaining and brilliant music. It has been a great honor. Thank you very much, Cher. I really, I really do Marcus. appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Marcus.